Now, as many people in the Northern Hemisphere prefer to uh, head off on holiday for the summer, many, of course, concerned about swimming. Is it safe, whether in the sea, in a river or in a pool? Well, joining us here on set is Marae Dundas, host of uh, France 24's Environment Show, of course, Down to Earth. Marae, good to have you with us. Um, traces of the virus responsible for COVID-19, they've actually been found, haven't they, in sewage water. Sounds worrisome, but your latest episode reveals that actually it could be useful. Yeah, it's not a particularly appetising topic to discuss, but true, traces of the virus that causes COVID-19, known as SARS-CoV-2, have been traces, uh, traces have been found in human sewage. Um, and what's particularly interesting is that traces can be found before a patient even displays any symptoms. So microbiologists at the French Water Authority, Eau de Paris, uh, decided to track this sewage in wastewater treatment centres. And what they found, in fact, is that the quantity of virus in our sewage correlates directly with the number of people presenting with COVID-19 symptoms in a specific geographical uh, area. So what they thought they might do is create a map of the epidemic in real time linked to this data that they're finding. And why is it useful? Well, in the case of a hypothetical second wave, we all hope it doesn't happen, but perhaps later in summer or in autumn, this could be used as an early detection system to alert authorities to a possible uptick in cases. And as one scientist actually told us, this is the kind of early warning system you want. When people start turning up at hospitals and dying, that's not the indicator you want because at that point it's too late. So the virus has made its way into sewage. What about making it elsewhere? I mean, we know, of course, that sewage makes its way into rivers and oceans, for example. Is swimming safe? Well, absolutely. Well, we know sewage does make its way into rivers and oceans. Normally, it is treated first. There are, however, cases of malfunctions. In the case of when there's heavy rains, there can be overflows and raw, untreated water can be released into the environment. And that's what's happened with other viruses, for example, the ones that cause gastroenteritis. They have slipped through the system and infected entire beaches. So you're right to ask, could this happen for the virus that causes COVID-19? Well, we went to a research institute in Nantes in the west of France and they've actually been taking samples of mussels and oysters because, in fact, shellfish can tell us a lot about what's lurking in that water and I thought we might take a quick look at a clip from our show um, regarding what they found. C'est un peu une éponge, ou je dirais plus précisément, c'est un filtre. Les coquillages vont être en fait un intégrateur de cette contamination qui a pu arriver au littoral. Pour le moment, nous avons sélectionné 24 sites sur le littoral et on a essayé de répartir sur les côtes normandes, Bretagne Nord, Bretagne Sud, façade atlantique et Méditerranée. Jusqu'à l'heure actuelle, nous avons trois séries de coquilles et de prélèvements qui se sont tous révélés négatifs. Bien évidemment, cela ne garantit pas qu'il n'y a pas de virus nulle part. Ce qui va être maintenant important, c'est de voir ces étapes de déconfinement sur la circulation du virus et surtout aussi l'arrivée des vacances avec des personnes qui vont venir sur la côte. So you've heard it from the scientists directly, no traces of the virus SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19 in seawater for the moment. Keep in mind, however, that the best way or the, the worst way of catching uh, COVID-19 is by being too close to an infected person. So we need to maintain the same principles of social distance measures that we do in the city. They need to be applied at the beach. Right. Thanks very much. Marie Dundas, 